Corin just does quirky so well. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I am going to be reacting to the album Follow the Leader from the new metal band Korn. Now this is Korn's third studio album. They released it in 1998 and I have only heard two other Korn albums, their debut studio album and also their second album Life is Peachy. So I am very intrigued to hear Follow the Leader and see kind of what they're going to do on their third studio album. A lot of you have been saying they kind of go in a different direction on this one, polish up their sound a little bit and it kind of is the album that launched them more into the mainstream eye. So yeah, I'm really excited to hear this one. So let's just dive right into my reaction to Follow the Leader. All right, so starting off with Follow the Leader, we have track one called It's On. Interesting start, some really distorted electronic sounds. There's like this boingy sounding background noise. Yeah, this track just almost has a little more restraint to it in a weird way than some of the stuff on their first two albums. And then they just bring all that energy back. That was track one on Follow the Leader called It's On. What a fantastic start to that album. It had so much of this like really dark, seething, kind of ominous energy to it. But then they still brought that really punchy, aggressive chorus too. That kind of just brought more aggression to its sound. And I'm going to move on to track two called Freak on a Leash. Corin just does quirky so well. They always infuse these odd little sounds. Something takes a part of me. This album really does have a more polished, I guess, sound to it. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, now I definitely know this is a corn song. I liked that little part there. That was fun, just with all those crazy vocalizations and then go. That was track two, Freak on a Leash. I can kind of see why this album is the one that made them more palatable to the mainstream. It's a little bit less abrasive and intense. I'm really enjoying it though. I don't dislike it more or less. It's just definitely different. And they're still infusing all of those awesome corn quirks, like with Jonathan Davis's vocalizations there toward the end, just the, the crazy sounds he was making. And then those little sound effects in the background. It's just typical corn craziness kind of sprinkled in, but I think they're just doing it in a slightly more refined way, at least so far on this album. All right, so moving on to track three, we have Got the Life. Kind of a nice bouncy percussion going on with that cymbal. It's really interesting hearing his vocals with this different instrumentation because Jonathan Davis's vocals are so just growly and raw sounding and it's interesting that the instrumentals are kind of embracing a different tone but he is still singing the same way as their first two albums. Track three, Got the Life. The percussion was just what stood out to me on that one the most. It just lended such a great rhythmic pattern to that song. It kind of carried the whole track through from beginning to end. Moving on to track four, we have Dead Bodies Everywhere. Such an ominous start. And it kind of sounds like a music box playing. Okay, 
Okay, this track sounds more like their earlier albums. Maybe it's that bass. <laughs> You see what I mean? This track just has like a heavier, denser sound to it. I guess this is just corn being corn. Track four, Dead Bodies Everywhere. That one I think is a standout for me so far because it sounds different from the first three. It's got more of that heaviness to it, more intensity for sure. And I absolutely loved how it started out so minimalistic and really creepy and eerie sounding. And then they just brought it on the chorus. Such an amazing dynamic on that one. All right, up next is track five called Children of the Corn featuring Ice Cube. I think Ice Cube is a rapper, if I'm not mistaken. So this is gonna be an interesting one to listen to. This track has an interesting sound to it. It almost has like a muffled quality to the instrumentals. This is weird. The instrumentals are so corn sounding. I'm just expecting Jonathan Davis's voice. This is a very entertaining track to listen to sonically for sure. I like his vocals on this part here. That was track five, Children of the Corn featuring Ice Cube. I think what threw me was the instrumentals sounded so much like a corn track, but then Ice Cube, the tone of his voice is very like clean and streamlined sounding, whereas Jonathan Davis's vocals have all of that rawness coming at you. And it was almost a little bit jarring to hear Ice Cube's tone of voice paired with those very corn-like instrumentals. I don't necessarily know if I dislike that song. I think it might just take some more listens for me to get used to. And I'm just gonna move on to track six called BBK. So you see I've this far. Yeah, that flow that corn has to a lot of their songs. This track is a good example of it. It's not a hip hop song, but it just has that groovy flow to it. I love that bass. Now we've got that DJ turntable sound effect. That was track six, BBK. I loved the flow of that one. It just had a great grooviness through the whole thing. Even though they changed up the sounds a lot, they threw a lot of effects on there. The vocals they changed up too. Even though they were doing a wide variety of things sonically, it still flowed really well and just such a great streamlined sound to that song. All right, moving on to track seven, we have Pretty. Yeah, they're definitely embracing a more restrained aspect to their sound on this album. There's elements of this track, Pretty, that really are reminiscent to me of Blind off of their first album. Such an abrasive, distorted sound just coming at you. It's almost like a punch in the face. Oh, I, 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 
Track 7, Pretty. I actually think that is one of the standouts on this album for me so far. It brought so much visceral intensity to it, but then they kept parts of it so restrained too. Like I said, it really reminded me of Blind off of their first album. Kind of a similar tone to that one. But I'm going to move on now to track 8 called All in the Family. This one's featuring Fred Durst. I don't know who that is, so I don't know what this one's going to sound like. Let's check it out. Really thundering percussion here at the start. Too bad, I got your beans in my bag. You stuck up, sucker. You look like one of those dancers from the Hanson video. Are you ready? Behalitosis is all your rockin' steady. Okay, so it's almost like a track that Fred Durst and Jonathan Davis are like poking fun at each other. They're kind of going back and forth on the lyrics here. So Corn on the cob. Yeah, it's almost like a rap battle song between Jonathan Davis and Fred Durst. Well, that was track eight, All in the Family, featuring Fred Durst. Kind of like, like I said, a, a rap battle of sorts between the two. They were kind of just poking fun at each other. From like an entertainment standpoint, I did enjoy it. I just don't know if it really fits on this album though. I did really like the chorus though when Jonathan Davis would bring a little bit more of that explosive energy and they took it out of the hip-hop groove. All right, so moving on to track nine now, we have Reclaim My Place. What the I love the rhythm of this one. It's got this really kind of intense back and forthness to its sound. We've got some really interesting bass going on. It sounds a bit different. I like it. This one's just going all out. I really like it. That bass though is the standout for me. It's really, really funky. What the fuck? What the fuck? I always love how he does that with his voice. He just keeps all of this energy right under the surface and then he just projects it all out when he needs to. That was track nine, Reclaim My Place. Again, just a little bit more power to that one, a little bit more kind of in your face with its sound, which I do enjoy from Korn. I like when they just bring that heavy aggression, but they're still blending it with kind of the slightly more polished up sound that Follow the Leader has had for the most part, which I actually really like. I like when they blend those two elements. And I'm gonna move on to the next song, track 10 called Justin. <laughs> Is that like a distorted guitar? It just sounds really scratchy almost. These vocals are different. I actually really like this. All the distortion going on. There's this really big expansive echoiness to this one. That was track 10, Justin. I loved the really futuristic, electronic distortions that they were doing on that one. The vocals were really fascinating to listen to. And then with those sound effects in the background, definitely embracing a new sound. I've never exactly heard Korn going in that style before, but I really enjoyed it. And moving on to track 11, we have Seed. I 
I love all their sound effects. Here we go with the crazy vocals again. They just completely stopped it there for a second. And now they're bringing all the energy back here at the end. Track 11, Seed. I liked how it was going back and forth so much. The verses were so minimalistic. They're really pulling back on their sound a lot at certain points, but then they're still bringing all of that explosive energy as well. And I'm going to move on to track 12 called Camel Tosis. This is another one featuring another artist I've never heard of, Slim Kid 3. Definitely a groovy start. That percussion is really cool. Very cold and industrial sounding. There's such a great fluidity to this track. There's like these really deep, distorted vocals in the background. Track 12, Camel Toses featuring Slim Kid 3. I actually really liked the flow of that one. It had this really great, like I said, kind of a fluidity to it. And then the chorus brought a little bit more of that typical corn energy when Jonathan Davis came in. All right, up next is track 13 called My Gift to You. Oh, there's those bagpipes. Again, with kind of a haunting quality with those whispered vocals in the background. Right, we got some really bouncy, springy sound effects going on. You could just feel all of that energy and tension building up. Track 13, My Gift to You. That one was definitely more of a pulled in track for Korn. They had all of this tension that just slowly built up across that track. And then toward the end, they went all out and Jonathan Davis kind of did that typical Korn thing where he just brought so much emotion and intensity to his vocals. All right, and last up on Follow the Leader, we have track 14 called Earache My Eye. Every now and then. But to the six nine of the double deuce. And you said something about a thumb. I don't know what this track is. Is it just gonna be a conversation between two people for the whole six minutes? Orale. Okay, so we have some instrumental starting up now. Such an explosive sound to this one. I love how the instrumentals are just like repeating over and over the same pattern. And then the vocals are just going crazy. <laughs> that 
That was track 14, Earache My Eye. I really liked how they kept the instrumentals pretty steady and consistent throughout that track, but then the vocals were just changing up so much. They were going crazy. And then toward the end there where the percussion just slowed way down, just a really fun, funky end to this album. All right, so that is officially going to do it for my reaction to Follow the Leader, the third studio album from the new metal band Korn. This one, typical Korn fashion, was crazy to listen to. It definitely took me on a ride. Super, super entertaining. They definitely played around with restraint a little bit more on this album. There were more quiet parts interlaced with that aggression. And then the whole album just had this really great, smooth, streamlined, kind of futuristic sound to it as well, which was interesting. I really enjoyed it though. Definitely a new direction for Korn to move in with their music. I'd say my favorite tracks upon first listening to Follow the Leader, the first one, It's On. What a great start to the album. It just brought so much energy to kind of get things started. Track four, Dead Bodies Everywhere, had a little bit of that more aggressive in-your-face tone that I really love from Korn. And also track 10, Justin, just how futuristic and modern that one sounded with all of the distortion going on. I'm glad I finally heard Follow the Leader, and I'm very intrigued now to see kind of where Korn is going to take this more modern approach to their music on their next album, which is Issues. So I'm definitely going to have to get around to doing a reaction to that one soon because I cannot wait to hear it. But yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.